Hey everyone, so we're going to talk today about these ACT problems of the month. I'm going to walk you through how to do all of them. And um, again, as always, if you still have questions about how I worked through them, just go ahead and leave those in the comments and it'll be perfect. I'll, I'll answer to the best of my ability. So with that, let's go ahead and get started on some of these questions and see if we can figure them out. So I'm going to just go ahead over here and I'm going to pull up our first question. Um, and let's see, what do we got here for our first one? Okay, so we have evaluate f of 2 when f of x equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. So first thing we want to do whenever we want to evaluate a function like that, here's what we want to do. Check this out. We're going to go ahead here and start by setting up what we're working with here. So what we are working with here, and let me move my mic so I can actually use my computer as well. Um, we have f of x, right? It equals x squared. Oops, that's not x squared. There we go. Plus 2x plus 2. Just sort of like that. That's what we're working with to start out. Oops, we don't need that. <laughs> oh man, this is already already causing me problems. We'll rewrite that. Equals x squared plus 2x plus 2. Just like that. That looks pretty perfect. Now, if we want to evaluate this function for a specific value, all we need to do is replace all of our x's with that specific value. So in this case, it's 2, right? 2 times 2 plus 2. So sure enough, if we're doing that, right, we can just go ahead here. Let's expand this out so we can see it all on one line. And what do we do? Well, we just have to say f of 2 is going to be equal to 4, right? Plus, oh, there's another 4 right there. That's pretty good. And plus a 2. We add all that up. And sure enough, what are we going to get? Let's see. It's probably going to be 10. It's not just probably, I can tell you for sure it is 10 because I wrote this question. So there we go, we get our answer as 10 and we would circle C here. So if we get our little pen here, we can circle C and now we know that is the answer. Perfect. So there's our first one. Well, let's just, well, we don't need this anymore. Let's get rid of that and move to our second one here. So our second one, a little more complicated, right? Because we have functions in composition when we put functions inside of functions. But I think we can figure this out, no problem. Let's try it out for ourselves here. So we want to start out, let me get my pen here, and we are going to start with this expression. We know that we want g of f of 0, right? When you have functions in composition like that, when they're inside of each other, that's how you say it, g of f of whatever the value is. Um, if they were the other way, you know, if f was on the outside and g was in the uh, inside, we would say it the other way. But in this case, you always just read it in the order that it comes along to g of f of 0. So I like to break this down for students and say the first thing we want to deal with is not the g. The first thing we want to deal with is the, the function that's inside, right? Let's just deal with that f of x. And we know basically how to do that, right? We know how to do that from the problem that we just worked together. If we Go ahead here, and we put in f of 0 equals, oops, there we go, f of 0 is going to equal 0 squared, right, plus 2 times 0. We're just plugging in zeros, right, for all of our x's here. Not going to worry about the g too much right now. And let's see if I can get our last number here. What is there? There's a 2 as well here. So if we go down here, what does that mean? What does that mean f of 0 equals? Oops f of 0, sure enough, let's see if we can type this out, f of 0 equals 2, right? So that's great. What that means then is if we know f of 0 equals 2, what we're basically doing, how I like to kind of diagram this out oftentimes, let's get a pen here, we're saying, okay, f of 0 equals 2. So let's just go ahead and kind of put that into here for ourselves. We're just going to put that right in and now we've eliminated that f of 0 from our expression, and things are looking much more simple. We've replaced f of 0 with just 
2. So now we have g of 2. And what is g of x? g of x is just equal to x. So I just replace, right, I'm going to go ahead and replace all of my x's. In this case, there's just one. It's pretty easy. But all of my x's with the value 2. So I do that with that 1x, and sure enough, we get down to g of 2 equals 2. Not bad. So we would go over here. We're working on, on this test, and we would circle. Perfect. It's C. We got it. So again, when we're doing these functions in composition, right, the name of the game here, what we want to do to make it easy for ourselves is just go ahead and find the inside function. Solve that like you would with any normal function, plugging in the value you have for your x's. And then once you know what that function is, you just put that in to the outside function. You just put that in, and whatever that number is, you then do the same operation. So it's just like the, uh, the first question we had, except we have to do it twice, basically. If that, that's how I like to think of it. So we got that all solved. Let's get rid of that one, and let's look at our next one here, another function question. So we want to just pull up another pen here for ourselves so we can keep writing. So we have right f of x. It's going to equal x to the 2 thirds power. So good news about this. Good news about this one. The function notation looks a little weird, but you always can use a calculator on the ACT, right? When we're solving the ACT, when we're, when we're doing the math section, we can use a calculator. So I would start by doing something like this. I would just say, okay, well, we know we want to put in two, and then we want to raise it. We can use that little caret here. If you've got your nice little TI handy, you just go ahead and use that. And you can put that in and say two divided by three. Make sure it's in parentheses, just like that. And sure enough, you're going to get, let's fix that, that should be 2. You're going to get that f of 2 equals, we can just, like I said, plug it right here into the calculator. Oh, look at that. I made a mistake. <laughs> it's not f of 2. We want to know what f of 8 is. I got too used to saying f of, f of 2. So let's change this to 8. There we go. Good save there. That could have got... That could have been quite a problem for us if we had kept trying to solve that. Okay, so here we go. We got f of 8, right? So like I said, first strategy for the ACT, you can use your calculator, so just use your calculator. 8, 2 over 3, we put it in, and sure enough, it's just going to spit our answer out. It's going to say 4. That's pretty good. I love when technology just gives me the answer and I don't have to do too much work. So f of Yikes, I keep making this mistake. F of 8 here, F of 8. What is F of 8? F of 8 comes out to 4. So that's one way of doing it. The other way you can think of it is saying that essentially this is just like asking what is F of 8? If you want to do it in your head, that is this. I'm kind of giving you the rundown. If you want to do this in your head, not use your calculator. This is essentially like saying take F of 8 and you can first um, just go ahead and square it. That's the two. And then you would go ahead and take whatever the cube root of that whole thing is. So you would get up to 64. And then you would take the cube root of it. And the cube root of 64 is 4. Again, that is just a way that we can split it out. And um, if you know you are struggling a little bit with timing on math, and you think that maybe you know it's just faster to do it in your head, that's sometimes how I, how I feel. It's a little faster to do it in my head than it is to plug into the calculator. Then you can just kind of again think of that intuition, saying, "Okay, eight squared, sixty-four cube root of sixty-four. That's back down to four. Sure enough, we get our answer here. B equals four. So that's how we do that. If you have more questions about that kind of quick mental math sort of thing. We've got videos specifically for that. I think it is a useful skill. Mental math, honestly, in the real world, not particularly useful or important because you can usually use a calculator. But for things like standardized tests where you need to move fast, 
sometimes those little mental math tricks can actually speed you up a little bit. So if timing and speed on the ACT math section is tricky for you, go ahead and check out our video, our videos on mental math sort of stuff because it's not always, I mean, like I said, I'm all for technology, love using technology, but sometimes just keying in the numbers and stuff can slow you down. And if you can just do that quick mental math, like I said, you know, just saying four, um, no, what was it? Eight, eight squared, 64, 64 cube root down to four. It can sometimes speed you up a little bit. So you can kind of decide for yourself what you like. But with that, let's look at the last question here and see what we've got. So this is less of a functions question compared to some of the others that we've seen so far, but it is going to operate in some similar ways. We're going to think of it in a lot of kind of a similar way that we might in these other questions. So let's just go ahead, get started here and see. Okay. So we don't have an f of x here, but we still have a y, and we want to know what y is given this setup. So let's just solve for y and say we know we've got an x here on the top. And notice I'm going to put everything in parentheses here, and I'm doing that because this is how you would enter it into your calculator if you were to use your calculator. The parentheses are really important for the calculator if you do something without parentheses, something like this. And you can, you can check this out in our uh, calculator video as well. The calculator will sometimes view this as a chunk here, and it will then say x over 1 minus x. So we want it to know that this is the top and this is the bottom. This is one of the most common mistakes I see students make when using their calculator. So you've got that set up, and sure enough, let's just go ahead and um, you know create another line here, and we'll just say, okay, well, we know x is one half, right? That's great. So let's just put in that one half for all of our x's, kind of like what we've been doing with functions. So one minus one half, just like that. That looks like a great setup. And then we can simplify a little bit. We say that y equals, we'll just leave the one half on the top, divided by one minus one half, right? That's just going to be one half as well. And if you have one half over one half, Let's slide this down so you can see it. But if you have any number divided by itself, it's always going to be 1. So we end up with y as 1 here. So let's just go ahead and circle this. d is what we want. Now, there are some tricky fraction things there. There are fractions over fractions. And if fractions are tricky for you, also make sure to check out the fractions video because that is very hard for students, I've seen time and time again. If you don't like fractions, don't feel bad. They are just very hard for people. So check out the fractions video, and there's a nice little tip there that I think you can use to make these a little easier. But with all that said, those are all four questions explained, and hope that was helpful. As always, leave questions, leave comments. If you're confused, can't wait to hear from you. But I will see everyone later. Bye. Hello everyone. So Grantly here. I hope you are loving our videos and feel like you're learning a bunch. And I want to take a second to invite you to check out our ACT prep app. It's packed with tons of videos, articles, gamified quizzes, everything that you'd need to do amazing on the ACT. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the link here and you can learn more about the app, and I hope to see you there.